Hi guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at the grabber components that came with the Runeberg VR Pawn component plugin. So to start off, um, you need to open up your Pawn in your VR game or experience. And to use the grabber components, you need to add them on the either or both of the motion controllers that you have on your Pawn. Okay? And there are two um, components um, as of this recording for, for grabbing fu functions. First is we have the simple grabber component. Let's just have a look at that. So we have a simple grabber component. And I'll attach it to the left motion controller for my left hand. And there is also another component called grabber. So this is the original one um, when I first developed the plugin. So I'll put it on the right, so we'll have a bit of a contrast. We'll use both of them um, in this um, tutorial, but of course you can use uh, simple, the simple grabber component on both, like motion controller left and right. So you can just uh, copy this or um, add another one and then plug it into the right motion controller or yeah, vice versa, the grabber onto the left, all right? And so what's the difference between the two? So in simple grab, with a simple grabber component, you can do precision grabbing of static meshes or actors in your scene, while the grabber component is meant to do um, quite a little bit more advanced with, um, with the grabbing. It has range and it has a push and pull um, functions into it and also a new um, locked grab which I'm going to show you um, later on in the video. So we'll start off with a with a simple one, which is a simple grabber component, um, but does have a really nifty feature of um, being able to precisely um, grab things on on meshes. All right. So let's compile and save that. Okay. So the simple grabber component, how it works is it has a grab sphere radius. So the sphere is basically a collision sphere that gets spawned um, automatically in during runtime. So I'll show you the mesh that I'm using for the motion controller. So it's a little bit clearer what I mean. All right, so let's show the pivot here. Maybe I'll do a wireframe, make it clearer. Okay, so what the simple grabber does is it uh, spawns a, a sphere collision um, right on the pivot of your um, controller mesh. And whenever it hits that um, collision, whenever it co uh, anything collides that's grabbable in, in your scene, it sticks to that um, sphere. So you can configure the um, the sphere collision to a uh, different radius, so it's bigger or smaller depending on what your mesh is and how your mesh is um, mesh's pivot is set. Okay, so here I'm just using the standard um, Steam VR controller. Ah, uh, sorry, not Steam VR controller, but rather the Vive um, controllers that came with the Steam um, installation. And yeah, so the pivot um, is actually around in this area, and the sphere will come up here. And the radius, I've set it as a default to 8, but it's configurable. So just to show you, so Runeberg VR Simple Grabber. And under VR, you have a grab sphere radius to 8. So you can configure this if you, if you need or want to. Okay, and to do a simple grab, let's clean up this blueprint first. All right. So it's in the left hand. Um, so let's open up a, an event. So motion controller left. So we'll do a left motion controller. So event motion controller left. And I want the grip for the mo left motion controller. So grip one. So when you grip the controller, it would actually um, issue a, gra a grab. Okay. And you can simply drag and drop this here. All right. And you can call up a function. So when you press the grip, I want to be able to do a grab. Okay. So simple grabber grab when it's pressed. 
the object type I'm going to get into um, in a while and released um, would be a release so released all right so enable physics is on so what enable physics does is um, re enables the physics um, for the object once you release it you can also of course disable if you don't want to enable physics all right Okay, so and that's how simple it is to um, do a grab and a release with a simple VR grabber. Now we'll create a few grabbable objects. So we'll do some simple cubes here. Let's bring it up. And we'll do on the details, maybe we'll make it a little bit smaller. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. I could have locked it as well. <laughs> it would be easier, but anyways, it's there. All right, so we have um, one cube there. Let me just go to the left and make it easy to plug it in. All right, I'll make a couple more. Um, maybe before we do that, actually, let's just go back to perspective. All right, so to make um, something grabbable with the um, simple grabber, all you need to do is make sure you simulate physics by default it will grab any physics object or physics actor in your scene. So you just need to simulate physics to make it a physics actor. All right, so it will go to a collision preset of physics actor. And since it's static, it shouldn't be static, okay. And another thing it needs is we don't need a hit, but I'm just going to click that. But um, critical is a generate overlap events. All right. So once you have that, it should immediately be grabbable. All right, so that's how easy it is to um, create a grabbable object and to quickly configure a simple grabber with the um, with the plugin. All right, so I mentioned um, earlier that you um, about the object type. So here it's defaulting to um, physics body. Okay, so any physics object or um, any object that has um, physics enabled, it should be um, grabbable. But if you want to fine tune that and have your own object type. So um, for those um, more familiar with the, um, with the engine, you can go to um, world settings, project settings, and then create under engine collision, you can create um, custom object types here. So an object channel. So for example, I create, I'll create one called grabbable. And you need to set it to overlap click accept and that's it so now we have a grabbable object type normally object types um, here five means um, physics body object types um, custom ones um, would start with an index of 14 onwards so you don't have to um, guess the object type ID so normally it starts with 14 but what you can do is do a literal enum so what we have here is a collision channel. So literal enum e collision channel. And you get a list of your collision channels. So you notice that you have your grabbable object there or grabbable object type. Okay. And it will return. Let's move this up. That I'll hit there. And so the return value is an enum. So we want to change that to an integer here. So, so we do a two int. There you go. So a conversion 
of an enum byte to int then just plug that in there there you go so now every time you grab it will um, make sure that the the object is actually grabbable okay and the um, enable physics um, is enabled here and you can disable it so and to change um, for example this thing to something that's maybe we'll create a new one just to show you uh, let's do a sphere here okay let's enable physics maybe not gravity and under collision so now it won't be grabbable because it's a physics actor we'll do a custom and the object type should be grabbable and don't forget that you need to generate overlap events for it to work so just click save and so now if I go to VR mode I shouldn't be able to grab this anymore because it's a physics body while this is a grabbable object okay because in the VR pawn we've set it so that it only um, takes a grabbable object all right so let's save that and play and give it a go Cool, so that's how easy it is to use a simple grabber component. All right, so now we can try the other one, let's see. All right, so just put a comment there, simple grabber. All right, put that aside, pile save. All right, so we do an event, motion controller, right, and we want the grip one as well so when we have the grip of the right motion controller we want to um, be able to grab an object and when it's released we want to release an object obviously all of the um, these inputs here you can set it up in your um, project settings but um, for this demo it's a lot easier to just show you the, uh, the direct events that we're um, using um, to make it a lot clearer so with a VR grabber, when it's pressed, similar to the simple grabber component, we just do a grab. And we can also do a release. So immediately, you should see that there's a lot more options with the standard grabber. And with the release, it's a lot simpler. Uh, because you don't need to um, indicate whether physics is enabled or not, um, because I'm using a different technique to implement the grabber or the grabbing uh, functionality here. All right, so let's just do a compile and save. Let's make sure it works. All right, so with the um, grab function for this uh, standard grabber, um, you need to specify your reach. Um, so this is quite cool if you have a mechanic where you want to do something like Star Wars with a force, you know, like you can telekinetically um, control objects from afar and then fling them so you can have a reach so maybe we'll do that let's do 100 and during playtesting I would like to be able to see a debug line so you just tick that show debug line so at least you can see um, where you're hitting and if it's actually grabbing stuff um, correctly all right so a lock grab I'm gonna show you um, shortly what that does um, and the rest of the options um, this just gives you the flexibility to be able to set the location of the um, the controller manually um, obviously if you don't set this up if you don't tick this it will just grab um, the controller location and rotation from whichever um, controller this um, standard grabber is connected to okay all right so simple and blueprints bit different from the uh, simple grabber in the with the um, standard grabber to be able to grab an object it needs to have a physics handle component um, in it 
So unlike the um, the simple grabber, we just set it up as a physics, make sure it's a physics body, and then um, make sure the overlap events is on. With this one, um, with the standard grabber, you need to add a physics handle component to it. So the reason for that is the way it works is it does a ray cast or a line trace from your motion controller onto the scene and whatever object it hits within its range that has a physics handle component into it that means it's grabbable and it will grab it okay so let's just add this quickly add component physics handle all right physics handle compile save done and that should make it grabbable uh, and of course make sure that simulate physics is on to make it a formal physics body and that's it all right let's give this a whirl so you can see here i can't grab um, these objects that were made for the simple grabber but i can grab this um, cylinder which has a physics handle in it. So I also promise you that I'm gonna be showing you um, this function here, like what a lock grab is. So let's just do that quickly. Go back, sorry. Lock grab, compile and save. So what this will do now is that it will lock the rotation. So it will ensure or try to ensure that the object that you've grabbed with the standard grabber uh, retains its original rotation from when it was first grabbed. So it will be useful for mechanics like you're holding a, I don't know, a pail of water or a pail of um, you know, steaming lava, something like that. And you're moving around the world and you don't want to spill um, the, um, the contents of that um, mesh. So you can use it for that. So this show you quickly here, make it clearer. So as you can see, um, the cylinder's rotation is locked. So no matter how we rotate the, um, the controller, it won't change the original rotation of the um, cylinder when it was first grabbed. So I can twist and fling it around like this and we'll still retain that original rotation for you. And you can fling it like that, retaining all the original rotation. All right, so that's it for the, um, the grabber component. So uh, feel free to play around with it and tweak um, to your liking. It's, um, there's a couple more things there. You, uh, it'll be fun to um, discover on your own. So thanks guys for watching and see you on the next video.